Video content and video marketing are king to attract new clients for your business. But how can you use video content when all of that production is high cost and you're low income? In today's episode, we're gonna look at how you can implement video marketing in your business at a low budget. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Fast Forward Amy Show, the show where we lift your life and business with simple strategies. I'm Fast Forward Amy, your host and coach, and I'll bring you a new episode every Tuesday. I used to be so jealous of other people's high quality videos. I used to look at Marie Forleo's videos and I thought, why can't I do that with my MacBook without any light or team available to help me? After a while, after looking at other people's really cool videos, I started realizing, you know what? They just have resources and skills that I don't have yet. But over the years I've grown and you might not know this, but even to this day, I was still talking about it with my team actually, I still look at my videos and I still bitch about all the details I think aren't good. But as we have grown as a company, we've also grown in production quality. Now, it's still not perfect. It's still not where I want it to be, but we have really made it better and better. But we've also only started doing that as our income actually went up and we were able to afford it. But the way we built that income wasn't because our production quality was so great, but it was because our content was so great, which is not the same thing because your content quality will always trump your production quality. You can have the best set, the best videos, hair and makeup and all of that. But if what you are saying is shit, no one is going to watch or listen. On the other hand, you can have really terrible production quality, but have really high vol value content that you put out consistently and people will still watch. Um, I think <laughs> um, an evidence of that is like very bad, like low quality Instagram lives or podcasts that were started out of just a closet with an iPhone, all of that stuff, because the content was just really great. So um, the past, well, we've, we're, Bleh. <laughs> sorry, we are currently almost at a point where we have recorded a hundred episodes of the Fast Forward Amy show. And when I started with my podcast, um, because although I recorded on video now, I originally started out with audio only. When I started, I did that in my PJ, PJs, looking like a bum in my apartment in Antwerp with a bunch of like noise outside with a really expensive microphone though and with my own equipment and I did everything myself. I prepped it myself, I recorded it myself, um, I edited it myself, I wrote all of the information that went along with the episode and it was quite a lot of work, uh, but podcast it really well and then as we neared our 50th episode, we stepped away from me recording my own podcast episode and we started batch recording with a professional team. The first time we did a professional videographer with a friend who did my makeup and my own clothes and then someone who was also my friend and I had like a trade deal with got me some styling and we grew and we grew and we've been at this place where the set was styled professionally and it wasn't, where my clothes were actually like tailor bought or we just used the clothes out of my closet and we're still looking for the sweet spot. But if there's one thing I've learned over the past year and a half um, as we've been creating this podcast and this Fast Forward Amy show is that it really actually doesn't really matter for me as one of my values is authenticity. It's really important that I am authentic on camera and it's still true that when I am very well prepared and the content is great, it will do great. If I am not prepared and the content is shit, it will not do great. So that's what I wanted to say. Your content is always most important. Now, obviously, as we have grown into a multi seven figure business, it is really it is a lot more professional and brand wise, it's a much better fit when we have this high quality content, right? We have a videographer, I'm looking straight into the camera as I am speaking, I can see his head below the camera. I feel much more supported uh, for me energetically. It's much easier to create four or even eight episodes in a day because I have the support from my team and we all prep for this together. So. Although maybe it doesn't have a direct result in terms of um, instant growth, it does have a result in terms of what we can do as a company where, uh, where we only spend half a day a month recording and we have episodes for an entire month. And I used to always be recording very last minute in my PJs in my office on a Monday to publish a podcast on Tuesday. Because we have um, installed these systems, these ways of batching, 
all of these processes, we are now able to almost produce 100 episodes consistently every Tuesday. We have never missed a Tuesday. But for you, you might be thinking, yeah, okay, Amy, but I don't have a team. Um, everyone is always telling me, video is king, video content is king, you gotta do video marketing. But where do you start when you don't have a budget? Because even for me, when I started, I still bought a really great microphone that was like 400 euros. Um, but you might be thinking, I wanna do this because I know it, it can mean a lot for my business. Like starting a podcast, starting a video show on YouTube, on IGTV, it's worth so much. Honestly, if I would start over again, the first thing I would do is just go live every week, record it with a good microphone, then use like record it extra with something else as I'm doing it, then upload it to a podcast and just start from there with a series of content. Um, but you might not know where to start. So I'm telling you right now, uh, if you wanna market yourself, if you wanna market your services, your products, even when you have a product-based business, Going on video is the shit and you do not need to be spending a lot of money in order to get started. Sorry to all of my videographer friends. This episode is not for you. <laughs> this episode is for everyone who doesn't know how to do this. <laughs> Coming from someone who has a brother who's actually a videographer, this is saying a lot. Because um, although I'm super grateful for this current setup, um, you don't need a lot to get started. So for example, if you have, well, let's look at the hardware first, right? If you have an iPhone, um, know that you actually have a pretty great microphone. Most people who've actually started out podcasting have started out in a closet space with just their iPhone and that's how they have recorded their podcasts. I think the most difficult part of doing it that way is that it's not easy to start and stop because I started out with actually just a bunch of blankets on my desk and a good microphone connected to GarageBand, uh, which is in the software. Uh, and there I would actually, as I heard myself making a mistake or whatever, I would already stop and start recording again because that way I didn't have a lot of editing work afterwards. But it's totally fine to just record in one go and then edit afterwards. So if you're looking for what equipment should you buy, I know that it's really exciting. But I also feel like if you don't have a couple of months of buffer in your bank account yet for your business to be financially secure, you probably shouldn't be spending your last money on audio equipment. And I think if you have an iPhone or a little bit of a decent, um, just general phone, I don't know what people use who don't have iPhone, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry for everyone who's listening on an Android. <laughs> I've just been using iPhone since I was 18 and I know it's not always great, but I'm just used to it. Um, back to what I was saying, so iPhone, great. Different telephone, also great, because you know, phones are actually made for recording your speech to call someone, so it makes sense. But you also have these little microphones. Uh, Rode makes some really great microphones for under 100 euros that you can buy. I've linked them up, by the way, um, in the article of this episode. This is episode 95, so if you go to fosterroutsamy.com forward slash 95, you just can find a list of different things that I'm saying, and I've linked uh, the product too. So I have a Rode NT-USB Mini, which is really great. I think it only costs around 60 euros. You can just plug it into your computer, does really great work. You also have these little mousy microphones for your iPhone uh, that you could plug in while you're recording a live and it really transforms the sound that you have while recording um, an Instagram live, for example. So with hardware, um, which is all of the gear, you know, it's really important to know that um, yeah, video quality is important. Yeah, light is important. But your sound is the most important part. No, actually, it's not true. Actually, light is the most difficult part. But when you're recording in an amateur phase for yourself, I think your light can be fixed by making sure that you are in front of daylight, so behind the window when you put the camera between yourself and the window, or even put your computer on a really, oh, really bright screen and have the light... Um, be coming towards your face, you can still do it like that, but your sound when that sucks, it's just really not nice to listen to. So make sure you are using um, something like a little microphone or recording it somewhere where there's a lot of fabric so your sound doesn't bounce back. And for your light, I would recommend if you do have a little bit of a budget, let's say you wanna stay under 200 euros total for gear, I would recommend buying a little Rode microphone either to plug into your um, computer like the mini one I just was talking about or to plug into your um, iPhone and then I would buy a ring light. 
Along the way, you could consider buying soft boxes or better lighting, but I think with a little ring light, you can already get started. Make sure that you can kind of adjust the settings so it's not always as bright, um, because then sometimes it creates this little ring in your eyes, which looks really weird. But if I would start over again and I had less than 100 euros in budget, I would put my computer screen on really bright, uh, make sure I'm facing a window and just make sure that I have a microphone and that's it. And if I didn't have any budget, I would just start recording on my iPhone, put a bunch of blankets over myself <laughs> and record like that. I feel like I need a blanket. So basically I would be recording with a blanket, just like this. You can see me on YouTube. I have very little or very few YouTube subscribers. So please come and check out what I'm doing right now. Cause if you're listening to the podcast, you don't know, but I have a blanket with me right now. Let me just shrug it off. Uh, <laughs> It really sounds ridiculous, but honestly, I still have a bunch of like IKEA things set up here. Uh, you can't see, but it's still not that complicated. Okay, I'm gonna lie. Thomas definitely did spend an hour on setting up this entire <laughs> installation here. Um, okay, so you are recording. On your phone, you have voice memos where you can just record a podcast. You know how I've recorded um, uh, very expensive episodes and then I was on a trip and my team said, hey, Amy, we need some intros, different intros for this thing that we're reusing. And I didn't have anything with me. So I ended up still recording that on an iPhone and you can't even tell. So honestly, you really don't need to be spending a lot of money in order to get started. I would recommend you get started. Once you start making a profit from whatever it is you're doing, then you invest in actually getting a good videographer or great equipment, okay? Uh, cash first. Cash is king. Also, always first make sure you can make cash before you spend the cash. Make cash, spend cash. First it's make cash, then it's spend cash. A lot of people do this the other way around. That's why they don't ever have cash. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, you've recorded it, but where do you actually edit it? Um, videos. If you are starting out, you can definitely on a MacBook, for example, you have iMovie on everything. It's free. You can just use it. Uh, watch some basic tutorials and you can get started. Audio only, you can use GarageBand. And honestly, if you are far along in your business, you might be like, okay, I want a podcast. I want a TV show, whatever YouTube show. I'm just going to hire someone to do this for me. Yes. Um, and I definitely don't think you should know how to do everything yourself, but I do think it's really handy that you know how to do this because for me, for example, this is going to sound rude, but my team can't bullshit me. Like I know what they can do and what they can't do. I also know when I am recording with someone else that I need two audio streams. And if someone then just puts one microphone in front of us, I'm like, yeah, but then we have a problem. Just an example, trying stuff like this out in the beginning. It shouldn't take you days and days and weeks to spend on it. If you are very bad at it, then yeah, outsource it or ask someone to help you who does know how to do this. But it does like learning how to edit your own podcast the first few times. It helps you to actually get better at recording the podcasts. Uh, it teaches you more about video marketing, audio marketing, all of that. So I don't think there's any, sh any shame in doing it yourself. What I do think is once you know you can make cash from what you're doing, please outsource it because your time should not be spent on actually editing all of that stuff. Okay. So I see far too many people with profitable podcasts or uh, YouTube shows still editing your own stuff. Start writing out a process for how to edit it, what you pay attention to and start having someone else do that. Um, so yeah, you can use iMovie. Um, there are alternatives like Movavi, stuff like that. Um, you don't you don't need the perfect software. You don't need to look for it. You need to find something that actually reduces background noise. There's a button for that somewhere. You need something that kind of adjusts the light in your video and you need to be able to split something and like cut. That's it, in my humble opinion. Um, and there's definitely a benefit to learning how to do it all yourself. Okay, so we've had your content is important. What you say is really important. Uh, the hardware, not that complicated. Software, not that complicated. Yeah, as I'm saying this, I'm thinking this all is not really the issue, right? Your gear isn't the issue. You're probably a millennial. You probably didn't grow up with computers, but you started using computers when you were what? Like 12, 15? Mm, something like that, six, I don't know. <laughs> you have a phone, you know how to take selfies. 
So what's the issue? It's probably that you hate hearing yourself talk. It's probably that you hate seeing yourself on video. And I have this really old video of my dad going um, sledding behind the car with me and my brothers. And I can hear myself talking in the car. And I remember hearing that as a kid and thinking, oh my God, my voice sounds terrible. Um, and you might still be in that phase. So if that's a thing holding you back from creating video content, know that that's really a confidence thing. You are literally physically wired to hear your own voice differently. So it makes sense that you feel this disconnect when you hear yourself talking in a video later. If you struggle with talking on video, for me, recording my podcast in the beginning, audio only, was really good so I could focus on my voice. Then later on, adding video was actually fairly difficult. What could help is recording with someone else if you're hosting a show, uh, because then you get some time to think while they're talking, which really helps. Uh, recording nonstop, as I'm doing right now, is not easy, let me tell you that. Um, and what could also really help is if you start making stories and you start interacting with people, for example, on Zoom. Again, you're having a conversation. Basically, what you need to learn when you are creating video content is that you are always talking to one other person. So when it feels really scary, um, I tend to tell my clients, imagine me being on the other side of the screen. Because of the 10 people watching your video, watching your stories, there's on each phone of the people watching, there's just one person and they're watching. So imagine you're talking to a friend, imagine you're talking to me. Smile to yourself because you see yourself reflected in the camera. I used to record on my um, my laptop and I used to record everything in photo booth and I didn't know how to cut videos or that that was an option. So everything was in one take and I would just be smiling at myself. And that's how I taught myself to smile in front of the camera and to really imagine there's only one other person. The downside of that is now I am in Zoom calls and I'm always looking at myself and it's really awkward. <laughs> so I should really unlearn that, but okay, that's a different story. Um, yeah, make sure you're just smiling and talking to one other person on this other side. And if you feel scared shitless, it's a sign you should do it. I was talking to a friend last week who said, yeah, I usually just share the good stuff, but I don't really feel comfortable sharing the real and raw in the moment. And I was like, yeah, but it kind of shows and it's much more comfortable for other people to look at you doing imperfect stuff. Um, one of my favorite um, quotes or like two words is perfectly imperfect. It's written on my mug that I'm holding right now. And it's really easy to talk about people making videos and telling them what they're doing wrong. Hell. I used to do that. I used to be like, hey, your video would be better if this and if that. But you know what? I was telling that to someone who was making videos and I wasn't making videos. And the moment I started putting out videos, they were really uncomfortable, by the way. You can still find them on my YouTube page, I think, or on my Facebook, I don't know. Like really old videos. I'm wearing like a hat. It's the middle of the winter. My hair is really long. My eyebrows, I don't know what happened to my eyebrows. Um, I edited, edited them in a really weird way with like emojis popping up in the screen. It was really dark. Honestly, you can't do any worse than I did back then. Um, but I made them and as I was making them, I got better and better and better at it. And now I don't cringe anymore when I see my videos. Uh, I am happy every Tuesday. I'm happy when my podcast is out. Sometimes I forget my podcast is there because my team takes care of everything for me. Um, but the video content converts so well. 80% of our clients in our Business Freedom Elevator, which is, by the way, launching right now, if you still want to join, 80% um, of our clients come from our podcast or our YouTube channel where they consistently like consume the content. They get really used to my voice, my way of teaching, and then they decide, hey, I want to be coached by you. So... It does really well. It's like in terms of sales, standing in front of an audience or doing a one-on-one -on -one conversation in real life is like the best thing you can do. The second best thing is video and audio, okay? Because it makes it way more personal than just text because you can't put intonation in text no matter how well you can write. Especially if your service is then something you offer in video. For example, for me, I do Zoom calls with my clients, so it makes sense that they can already see me like this beforehand and they can get to know me and see if they want to get coached by me. Um, yeah, so what I did want to say, I wanted to give you a few extra tips. I think by now you know that, yeah, the specifics are important, but I've created this um, little checklist and a guide for you. So if you're like, yeah, I want to start a video show or a podcast, you can go to fastforwardsamy.com forward slash start your show. So start your show is a guide where I've inserted my favorite equipment, 
um, and favorite tools to use to start something and what you need to pay attention to if you want to create a series of content. So you don't need to worry about the things I just said, you know, like hardware, software, different steps to take. That's there. You can find it through the, the link in the description, but um, there are some things that you need to be paying attention to. Um, obviously your background. If your background is super messy, sometimes for a behind the scenes, that will be really great, but don't do it like as a standard because it will just look very unprofessional. And no matter what I've just said about your light, your consistency and your content trumping production quality, it is still important to look trustworthy, to look kind of professional. So make sure it's not a total mess if you could just like put some things to the side. Make sure you have some light coming to your face, you know? Um, and if you're wondering what you should create your video content about, well, what are you making your other content about? Maybe you haven't started with content yet, then definitely creating some Instagram posts to get started is a good way to get started. But you gotta know that it is really easy to turn video content into text-based content. So for us, our podcast gets turned into an article, it gets turned into a Pinterest post, multiple Instagram posts, shorter um, video bites and all of that. It's because we, we start from the piece of video content, but you can't turn text into video, you know, then you have to start all over again and start recording. So um, what I would do is start out by creating a series. What I said at the beginning, start by going live every week around a certain topic. So if you're a nutrition coach, maybe you can answer a question every week. Questions are always really great for search engine optimization because people will actually type in questions in Google. Um, like, how do I de-bloat? for example. So you can create a live about how do I de-bloat and then you can turn that into a blog article, an email, and you have evergreen content that will always get you new leads because people will still go back to that. And then when you get those frequently asked questions in your inbox, be that through email or from clients or whatever, you can use your own content as resources to send them, um, yeah, to send them. So for example, last week, I recorded an episode about um, intake calls and sales calls. And I know that a lot of people will ask me questions about that. So from now on, I can just send them that episode instead of always just answering them personally. Answering personally is by the way, very good for your sales, but giving them trustworthy resources is also very good. <laughs> um, so, Creating a series around questions is probably your best way to get started. I think with video marketing, if I look back on how I started, um, it didn't cost me anything. I didn't buy a microphone, I didn't buy a laptop or a camera, nothing to get started. What would have helped me is to um, be aware that I am very multi-passionate and that one week I felt like creating three videos and putting all of them out and then I created no more videos. So I think that's one of the most important things I wanna tell you is, if you want to do this, which I highly recommend for your sales and marketing and your overall authentic authority is start by creating a series, um, center your series about a certain topic like nutrition or weight loss or weight gain or muscle building. Or if you're a photographer, light, um, indoor light, outdoor light, uh, under the table light, I don't know, <laughs> just use a certain topic and create a series that's built around questions about that topic and just start from there and be very consistent. You can all batch record it beforehand or you can just hack yourself and be consistent by telling people, hey, every Wednesday at 8 p.m. I'm going to be doing this and you will have to start doing it. And if you want to hack yourself even further, what I would then do is grab a piece of paper um, and already write down 30 ideas that you could um, record videos about, then choose the 12 ones that are easiest for you or the 13 ones easiest for you. And there you go. You now have your topics for an entire quarter of Instagram lives. Those Instagram lives can be turned into IGTVs. Those IGTVs can be turned into podcasts. Those podcasts can be turned into an article. That article can be turned into an email. That can be turned into six Instagram posts. That can be turned into a Pinterest post. That can go to your Facebook, to your Twitter. Before you know it, you have like 20 pieces of content and you only had to record one live that was like 10, 20, 30 minutes long. And the best part of this all, once you do know how to start making money from this, for example, by referring to lead magnets, by people reaching out to you, buying from you because of your great content, then you can pay someone to do all of the other steps for you. So it becomes really easy for you to become omnipresent, which is kind of the goal of video marketing. Uh, especially when you batch it, it's really nice. Like I know, I think it's Jenna Gutcher. She recorded 52 podcast episodes. So she basically like gave birth 
took a whole while off and she still had her podcast and her entire content machine just running. Lately, I've been thinking more and more about what will happen um, when I decide I want to take some time like that off, especially with a growing team. It's been on my mind a lot. And recording the podcast, a batch recording that and having that run is like the least of all of my worries because I know we know how to do this. I know we know how to make content and questions like these, like how do I make sure I can create video content without having a high budget? those will stand the test of time. Sales, marketing, the different questions we've been answering these past few weeks, how do I raise my prices from a few episodes ago? That will continue to be a question for my ideal client. So I will keep attracting clients like that because for example, with podcasts, the algorithm is really nice still. People will just research the question. They will find you on YouTube, article. We have a lot of different channels where we pull people in and that's how they can buy our courses, our programs and stuff like that. And I might actually be able to take some time off in the future. So I hope to do the same for you. And I'm guessing you're really busy in your business. I'm guessing you are trying to get clients or you're really busy with clients. You also have a family life. Life is just really busy. But if you spend only one hour every week going live or creating a video that is actually around something people want to know, I guarantee you that is going to boost your business. It's going to fast forward your business even more than you could have ever imagined. So if you're interested in starting your own video show, I created a guide for you with all of the different things you need in order to get started, just like we have created the Fast Forward Amy show. So you can just go to fastforwardamy.com forward slash start your show, download the guide and get started. We have it available for you both in Dutch as well as in um, English. My team hates me for creating a new guide like that, but here we are. That's why we're here. Um, and yeah, if you're interested in getting more coaching from me because you like my style of teaching, although this was kind of more like a conversation just between you and me, know that we are currently um, accepting new coaches for our Business Freedom Elevator. So if you go to fastforwardamy.com forward slash elevator, you can find out more about how you can make sure you increase your authentic authority through all kinds of marketing, not just content, and how you can actually create a smart business model that is going to make both you and your clients really happy and profitable in the long run. So come and have a look through fastforwardamy.com forward slash elevator. And then uh, I guess I'll talk to you next week, Tuesday for a new episode of the Fast Forward Amy Show. Bye.